What's up, guys? Doc Andy here with the Doc and Jock Podcast. And I want to talk to you about a product I've been using recently to help with my running, and that is the Shoe Q. The Shoe Q is an insole you put in your shoes, and it has a heel cup that has these little raised up nubs on it. So you'll know if you're landing on your heel or your midfoot or your forefoot. I've been using this successfully with my own patients to help clean up some, some running related issues for the past few months and myself as well. And I really, really like it. It's really a simple solution to a problem. We know if you land in a overextended position or a heavy heel strike, you will eventually break down and get hurt. If you land in a good, solid midfoot, forefoot strike under your center of mass, you're going to be faster. You're going to hurt less. So ShoeQ helps solve that problem in a really simple way. So guys, you can get a set of these and save a little bit of money at the same time. If you go and use the discount code JOCK10, save 10% on a ShoeQ and go ahead and start working on improving your running mechanics. Your body will thank you. What's going on, gang? Doc and Jock podcast. We have an episode here to talk about how to make every day back day and kind of talk about a story that got the whole dang Doc and Jock scenario rolling. But before we get into that, Danny, I'm staring at you on the Skype, and I'm really proud of the beard growth. You're looking sharp, my friend. Thank you. Actually, in, in fact, I have a couple of gray hairs in my in my beard. That's how I know that um, I'm old. Apparently. And distinguished. <laughs> that, right, distinguished. Uh, yeah, beards are beards are uh, way better, man. You don't have to shave every day. Uh, you look older. I don't. Maybe uh, they're nice. I like them. Well, here's what's funny. You say that about you know you grow a beard so you don't have to shave every day, but then you shave your head so you don't have to comb your hair at all, right? Yeah. So it's interesting. So I'm I, right now. I'm kind of in that phase where I'm thinking about shaving my head because I've gone really long hair on the top of the head so it's an interesting scenario but uh you know uh man maintenance man growth uh manicuring whatever you want to call it um interesting stuff but i like the beard man keep it going buddy i'm trying i haven't shaved in uh seven weeks now let's uh let's talk about your goal setting do you have a goal with your beard here or is it just see what happens no goal no goal i i want to uh yeah you know what I, i i got challenged by a friend at a wedding that okay. essentially called me, uh, for lack of a better word, a pussy. Because uh, nice. I told him that I tried to grow a beard when I got out of the Army, and I couldn't do it because it was so itchy. I couldn't take it. And he mm. basically was like, yeah, you got to get over that. Um, give it give it like three weeks, he said. Give it three weeks. He'll get past it. The are first you, couple weeks are bad. Nice. Do you find yourself stroking it often? Do you, you All the time. It? What does the wifey think? All the time. I, don't, I think she's indifferent. So here's – I'll give you one piece of advice, and this is for anybody out there in podcast land listening. When my, my first month with my beard, my wife hated it. Mm. And then a year later, I wanted to shave it, and she said no. So for me, it's a sign of like asserting your dominance because I like that. you can impose your will on people. And my beard is a reminder to just stay the course and do what's in your heart um, regardless of what your wife thinks. But uh, That's sound advice. <laughs> Just yeah, that's gen- right. in general for life, <laughs> not just beards. Well, cool, man. So I, I thought it would be fun, Danny, to, you know, we have this everyday's back day concept. We've been talking about it on social media, and it's, it's something we even got Mobility Wide to tweet out. When, when you mentioned the concept to Kelly, he kind of thought it was cool. And it really, it's really the genesis of what started this Doc and Jock concept. And it, it kind of starts with, with the beginning of this in Hawaii when I was trying to train for the games and had a boogered up back. So I thought it'd be cool to kind of tell that story and then talk about how, you know, how folks can really implement making every day back day. What are your thoughts, man? Yeah, no, it is interesting because it's, you know, that was right around the time when you were training for the games with uh, CrossFit 808 and you were also getting into, you know, some, um, some weightlifting competitions. And I remember, you know, you, you kind of you came up to me and were like, man, my back's jacked up. I feel it whenever I deadlift, you know, when it gets kind of heavy. And uh, I feel like I got more in the tank, but it just doesn't feel right whenever I start to get around that, you know, 90-ish percent um, weight. So, you know, we it, we took a look at it and, and we saw some some pretty common things that, uh, you know, we, and we had, we had you do some, some kind of non traditional movements, like some rolling patterns and some, uh, flexion based movements and things where we, we constantly think so much extension, 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 just like strength, strength, strength. And, uh, and, and that's not always the 
problem, right? In most cases, um, people are very strong, but not necessarily stable through the the force that they can produce. So it would be kind of like having a Ferrari engine and a Honda Civic. You know, you would you have this big engine and you can go really hard, but the you just you can't keep up with that. You can't keep up with the horsepower. So you know, with you, the interesting thing was I remember you know you, um, you shot me a text and you were like, dude, I I just deadlifted like 500 pounds and I hadn't hit. 500, you know, and however long, and I think you're stuck at like 445 or 450, something like that. And that was, you know, within, I think two weeks. So no, that's exactly right. It was a huge PR. And the fact was, it was just really awareness, right? right? It wasn't a huge, it, it was really going back to doing some base level exercises that maybe folks would think are kind of, um, you know, for, for girls or kind of for, for folks who are learning things or exercises that, you know, aren't really going to produce strength. But what they produced with me was a body awareness and how to set up properly. Yeah. Cause you go into that point and what I constantly see with athletes is when they go to set up for a squat or they go to set up for a deadlift, it's all about setting their lower back into right. that huge arch. And that's all I was doing, arching the shit out of my lower back, no pelvic floor, no abdominals, no thoracic awareness, just getting the lower back set and picking something up, you know, and you know, there might be a place for that, you know, in gymnastics and there might be a place for that in maybe RDLs or whatnot, but to, to do big moves, um, to do, to deadlift, to snatch, to clean and jerk, you really need to learn how to set the trunk properly. And then when you kind of put me on some pelvic tip, Builds and some dead buggies and some and some rolling around stuff where it was like okay actually this is my core this is my trunk this is how to use the whole cylinder not just f- uh, arch the shit out of my lower back to yeah. pick something up really things started to click and I really felt like for the first time I was optimizing my entire trunk and I'll also tell you another thing in another area where that really helped my performance um a big weakness for me when i was crossfitting was pull-ups um it was having the power to do a lot of them but i couldn't sustain a kip or i couldn't sustain a butterfly and honestly once i learned how to kind of set the trunk there too and keep that bad boy in place on the pull-up bar pull-up numbers started to go and that's really the time where i looked at my my performance and said okay this is i can actually help this team do something in the games and and it was some really simple protocols that you put me on that helped that yeah it it doesn't in many cases take it doesn't take too much right and you know what uh, the emphasis of this stuff and and really you know this is this is kind of how this collaboration began it's funny to see how it's come full circle because that was how many years ago was that it was like five years ago well that was 2012 so four, 2000, four years ago? Yeah, it was, it was before the 2012 regional. So, yeah. yeah, it was, it was you know, it was funny, too, because that was where between there is where I realized that I probably wasn't going to make it as an individual, right? So, you know, the, the year before I had finished the Open in 64th place in the NorCal regional, missed going to um, the individuals by four slots. Uh, but then we started having kids, some things happening, and I also looked at the leaderboard, and I'm like, well, I'm not going to beat – Neil Maddox and Jason Kalipa and Blair Morrison and these maniacs. Um, I believe Buddy Hitchcock too. I'm not going to beat these maniacs in, in workouts. So, uh, that's when we kind of started to form up the 808 thing. And then it was real quick, even in that gym, I was like, I need to get my shit together to hang with these broads. Um, or I'm not even yeah. going to make this team. So, um, you know, it was some soul searching, some really good advice. And then I think I was at the point where the motor was where it needed to be. The strength was where it needed to be. But it was some fine tuning things that really, really put it to the next level. Yeah, for sure. And, and it's and performance is, is great, you know, and and but performance and injury prevention are the same thing. You know, I think this is where where anybody can really benefit from some of this stuff. And it's because if you move well, in particular, if you control this, the chassis of our body, you know, like that, that, that big uh, group of bones and muscles between the shoulders and the hips, that whole kind of component area, um, then you can really res- make yourself very resilient, uh, injury resistant, and, and you imp- improve your performance. But it's, it's the day-to-day stuff too. You know, it's the, this is how my spine should move. You know, hey, I can pick my kid up out of the crib and not, you know, throw my back out and then I can't get to the gym. And then there's this vicious cycle of, well, 
now I can't train and now I'm stressed out so I'm making bad food choices and and now <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting heavier and, and it's because I'm eating bad and I don't have this keystone habit of training and so all these bad things happen in many cases because of a of a, a spinal fault and as soon as we start to prioritize that those things go away and and, and something Joe and I have been working on and this is you know it, something that's been, it's it's been in the makings for ever since we started this podcast and, and we really coming to a conclusion of how can we best help everybody that listens to this which at this point it's pretty cool to see the reach that we have but again and again and again we keep getting questions about the back about you know how common it is that people get hurt and and for us it really comes down to are you prioritizing this thing and and we we don't really think every day should be back day you should do something every day whether that be mobility strength stabilization work whatever it is to you know push yourself forward in a positive progression of having a healthy spine well, yeah and i think you hit it on the head you know for me when we rolled through it in my own warm-ups because i know i've had that strange little back tweak and this was started way even before crossfit around 2008 when i'm deadlifting in a in a globo gym but when it when it comes down to it when i feel good when i warm up right and my back's in good health i'm taking a little bit every day to mobilize stabilize and strengthen the trunk before i train just to give myself some awareness so i think that's what we've tried to do here so let's kind of go through maybe real quick we got us both on let so you're the mobility guru on the podcast so if you had to when we look at what we've done with this program and we talk about mobilizing the back every day in terms of time domain and regions to specify for for the 90 percent out there who have back pain who are trying to train and trying to be smart where would you spend how much time would you spend on mobilizing your back and where would you prioritize um the, the region to do so there, I think the two main regions would be the the hips and the the thoracic spine um, for rotational purposes because the the spine is not really the lower back I should say is really not designed to to be a primary rotator you know it's it's designed to be a, a stable chassis for movement to be produced off of so and that movement should come from your hips and and in rotation the thoracic spine as well actually has a lot of rotation so those are the two areas that I would spend some time on and you should be spending some time on one of those two areas daily. Now, it could just be one technique. Uh, and I, I think this is where people make make a big mistake. There's definitely a place for mobility. And, you know, 10 to 15 minutes a day of doing that is totally fine. But many people have uh, sufficient mobility, and they don't necessarily need to spend 30 minutes a day on that. And what they miss out on is control of the mobility that they have. Or, or maybe their body is um, kind of putting the handbrake on because it it doesn't feel stable and safe and it basically it's like a circuit breaker so if, if you put your back in a good position then you turn everything on that you have the capacity to produce whether that be range of motion and strength so i think that you can get away with a little bit less mobility work to the spine maybe you do a little bit more you know to your uh, ankles or some of these joints that get really stiff that you really have to open back up and really focus and narrow in on the hips and the thoracic spine and prioritize one of those two areas or if not both daily yeah, and, and this is, I think, where I really made the big turn to really using, excuse me, securing the chassis properly and letting my outer extremities that were pretty strong work where I think you're talking about stability and how important that yeah. is. And yeah. I think what I was excited about when, you know, you came up with this great analogy that, or at least came, you were the first one to tell it to me was, hey, your your trunk, your core, whatever you want to call it. And, and I think we're going to call it a trunk because that's what Donnie Thompson would call it. And that's a pretty, yeah. pretty strong guy. But, uh, you know. I, I kind of look at it in kind of four regions and, and for me just kind of attacking that stability from two different places where I'm trying to gain some static stability where I might hold an exercise or a shape for a particular time and then dynamic stability where I'm going to engage my back in a particular shape whether it's an arch hollow or something neutral and then try to move my extremities there and maintain that position. Um, and I think it's pretty important uh, how far – you know your your thoughts on that, and maybe even how much time people should place into that, into into stabilization work. I, yep. I, I realistically, and and the, you know, you and I are both busy people. You know, we got kids, we've got wives that we enjoy spending time with. You know, friends and and work and all kinds of stuff. And so. You know, I think you have to be realistic. If you're not training com competitively, then you probably consistently can try to get 15 to 20 minutes of work in a day and stack that around your training session whether that be pre or post training and get some get some really good work in and make it and make it just part of your routine right so if, if you have to do an hour 
a, a, a second session a day, it's not going to last very long for most people. So I, I think you, I think the minimal effective dose is in that 15, 20 minute range for people to realistically be able to do it and get a positive um, change out, out of the time that they're going to put in. And this would be with the mobility included. Yeah. So, so I, we're talking. Yeah. I, I would say between the two, because if you if you look at like a program template of you know one mobility drill uh and then a couple stabilization um control drills strength drills whatever you want to call it for those days you know that is a nice little triplet or couplet of things that really really chip away at this problematic area that i mean the statistics are there it's you know 80 percent of people are going to hurt their back and that live in the u.s if you're breathing right now eight out of ten <laughs> of you are going to hurt your back and then 90 percent of you if you have hurt your back are going to have reoccurring back injuries the rest of your life and that's a that's a very shitty statistic uh, and i see it day in and day out in my in my practice you know and joe i'm sure you see it your athletes and if if you've hurt your back you're probably like yeah damn i have a re-aggravated my back um and, and, and it's not a fun thing when it happens so you might as well prioritize it because it'll help you perform better and you won't get hurt. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, and this is exactly what I kind of do. I'll, I'll kind of just start a running clock and put, you know, 15, 20 minutes on it. And I'll bounce back and forth between a mobility, a stability and some kind of strength practice to get myself going, to get myself feeling like, I'm ready to go because I see so many times I was I went to Vermont recently and trained with a buddy who works in his garage and we had a really good clean and jerk session. He goes, man, that's the best I've clean and jerked in months. And I'm like, well, what was the difference? He goes, um, you made me warm up. Yeah. <laughs> isn't, like, that, isn't that funny? No shit, Josh. And honestly, it was kind of what we're talking about here. Just walking yeah. back and forth. You know, we, we did, we did an anterior hip drill. We did, um, a banded rotational strength drill and we did dead bugs. And then we fucking killed some clean jerks. Well, you know what I mean? And look, look, <laughs> if you're listening to this, you're not 18 years old. And if you are 18 years old, enjoy it while it lasts. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's not, it's just not the way it is, man. You know? And, and, uh, if you neglect your body long enough, you'll have problems. I mean, I had a guy that came in here the other day. He played, um, offensive tackle in the NFL back, back in the, uh, the eighties, the, the early eighties. And so on he, AstroTurf, <laughs> he, he's a huge human being, massive man. And he's, he's gained a lot of weight. He's had two back surgeries, you know, and he's coming in here and, uh, and, and he's like, look, I'm in a bad place, man. I've got 15 grandkids and I, and just in the worst health I've ever been in my life. And I, I can't even, I can't even pick my granddaughters up, you know, and this is a, this is a big guy. And to see him, you know, on the, the, just like cusp of tearing up talking to me about this, it, it's, it's not about just, you know, Hey, deadlifting more weight. Like for this guy, you know, him having back health means enjoying life, enjoying his family, enjoying the things that really matter. And so if he's got to put in some time every day, then he's going to do that. And, and not only that, what if he had done that, when he started playing in, in, in the NFL. Yeah. I mean, he's got, he got some miles on him, but man, it some at some point in time, it will catch up with you. And at that point, it's hard to dig yourself out of that hole. Well, this is where we get into some diminishing returns. And honestly, a lot of what I do as a strength coach, teacher, working with individuals is I always think my job is first and foremost is to kind of provide contrast and education in what they're doing. And I think we're coming to the point where you can kind of see diminishing returns in strength and intensity, strength and intensity, strength and intensity. You beat people over the head with strength and intensity long enough and – they're going to have they're going to be banged up for the long term and i think that's a really great example of that i mean whenever you're training a sport and you're trying to be the top one percent in that sport whether it's crossfit or ping pong there's going to be some diminishing returns and i think you know i've met very few pro athletes in my life and like you said most people we know are going to be in that 80 to 90 percent of folks who who for one have bad backs and also are probably that 99 percent of the population that is not going to make their money training or playing a sport so you might as well guys back off if you can take 15 minutes out of your training and prioritize some of these spinal positions for one you're going to be healthier in the long run but two your workout's actually going to go better yeah absolutely so. absolutely and, and well and i think you said something interesting about strength too in terms of strength and stabilization and i, I like the way that you approach it because you have a couple um you know, kind of unique subsets to that that you like to look at. So give me an example of, all right, if you're training for, um, you know, back health, spine, spine strength and, and control, what are the areas that you like to focus on? Yeah. So what I was, again, I'm dealing with a lot of CrossFitters who have coaches, have programs, have goals. So I'm always looking for what can I 
what can I do in their work to provide contrast to help them build? And what can I do that's going to fit in? So I mean, there's three substrates of strength that I look for for the back. And I'm always going to prioritize some kind of rotational strength. I'm going to prioritize some type of unbalanced strength. And then I'm also going to break down the barbell movements that they're doing into partial movements. So we can either establish good positions, maybe overload the movement. And also going back to that initial point, teaching them how to brace properly. So put them in that partial movement where they don't have to go. Again, the snatch is a big movement, right? If you focus on the snatch, how do you pick it up, get over your head, squat with it? That's a big move. But if you can focus on, well, how do I break the barbell off the floor and then just get it to the knee and hold that shape for a moment and then control and put it down, I can put myself in a better position to perform later on. So I think when you incorporate some of those movements, you do really well. And I think you can do them smartly where then you use bands, when you use light load and lift it up. And especially if you can get into some things like kettlebells and get some unbalanced movements in like carries and walks in different positions, you can really teach the hips how to do things like hold water and maintain good positions and do some things that are going to transfer to all movements. So um, that's how, that's kind of how I attack it when I look at athletes. Well, in particular, you know, that unbalanced uh, section you're describing like that, there's some really profound research that's been done on that in particular carries uh, single arm carries because you know you're training one half of that spine to not side bend right so you're and and here's the big mistake that i see a lot as well is uh, if you're listening to this you probably have something to do with crossfit weightlifting powerlifting some some type of training you're running something like that but all of these sports are sagittal plane sports you're just effectively moving in one plane of movement and there's three planes of movement and in life we go through all three of them so if you make yourself very very proficient and strong in one plane that's great but you've now neglected the other two Uh, so when we do a carry that trains the the frontal plane you know we do something like a chop or a lift well now we're training the rotational plane and and we have to be functional in all of these and if you don't believe me go out and try to kick a soccer ball and Hmm. see see how that works for you you know if you play a pickup game of soccer and all you do is is a weight lift or crossfit or whatever it might be you're gonna have a very hard time you know, having the strength and control in your lower extremity to be proficient and not hurt yourself, stopping, change of direction, rotating, you know, running into somebody and being able to uh, receive contact and turn. And these are things you don't train, but you should. Yeah. And, and honestly, when you talk about not training them, that they should, people want to overcomplicate it. Like I've been in CrossFit gyms where people spend 20 minutes on the foam roller, 20 minutes with a band, right. and they're kind of mindlessly going through the motions bullshitting. Well, they could spend 15, 20 minutes on mobilizing, stabilizing and strengthening their trunk and get much more bang for their buck if they have a plan, if they do it smart. And if you have an idea what you're doing, I mean, I do this stuff every time I train now and i as wish a warm I up right as a warm-up yeah and i think it's the best place to do it and, yeah. and think about this if you give your tell your kids okay you can here's your dessert all right eat your dinner afterward yeah that's good right. luck <laughs> good luck it's not happening so yeah. if you have your athletes or even yourself i'm the same way you know if i'm like oh yeah yeah i want to I want a front squat. I'll always do that. You know, I'm always down to like, you know, do a strength movement or whatever it is I'm there to do. Yeah. But nah, do I really want to do some of this auxiliary stuff? Not really. But if I front load it and I lead with it, I'll always do the stuff that I want to do. No, that's exactly right. And, and that's the best place to do it. And I think that you can go through other ways where you can kind of chop it up and do this part here, that part there. But man, every time in the, in the days where I train really well and the days where things click, like my buddies recently training in the garage in Vermont, you know, it's hitting it in the front and taking the time to do it. It's the days when I don't that kind of grind out. And honestly, I can remember, you know, the last time I kind of tweaked my back was in Donnie's gym and we didn't warm up. We didn't do anything. And all of a sudden I'm picking up this fucking 170 pound tube, you know, bunch of, Deficit bunch of times. <laughs> I mean, it's on the yeah. ground. Yeah. So, that thing's you know, heavy. And, you know, having to do it because it was a priority movement because if I dropped that tube, Danny, I would have dropped it on your hamstrings. (laughs) It weighed as much as I did. And that's what, you know, Donnie's was, what, 380 or something at the time? So he's putting this 175-pound tube on him, but that's like half his body weight. I weigh I weigh 175 pounds, and you put a 175-pound cannon barrel on me, and 
And Donnie was like, you can do it. You can take it. I'm like, let's get a 380-pound can barrel and put it on you. He'd that's probably right. love that. But, you know, I mean, and that stuff's great, right? And Donnie is a perfect example of somebody. Like, Donnie, this is somebody that t- blew a disc out in his mid-40s and self-rehabbed by prioritizing his spine over and over and over again. Every day he, he spends time on his back and ended up going to set the world record in total, uh, you know, at age 46. You know, that that's saying something. That guy was not... 25 years old but he just prioritized the right things and he started to notice man if i do this i feel better but hey my strength is going up as well yeah and i love it and you, you're 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 making great points and you're saying a great word and i i think it was uh, travis jewett we talked to and i don't know if the episode's aired yet but he said something to us that's really changed my thought process it's it's you can sit here and say i don't have 15 minutes to add to my warm-up i don't have 15 minutes to add to my workout because i don't have time but then you also have to ask yourself the question do do you prioritize it? Should you prioritize the back? Yeah. Do I have time to prioritize setting my trunk so I can move properly? That's the better question. And when you prioritize the back, when you when you change your mindset to say every day is going to be back day, I'm going to do something every day to prioritize the spine, the back, my positioning, then you're going to be in a better position well, and, are, and happier training. Well, are you even doing a warm-up to begin with? Because That's right. most people are not. So, you know, you get there and you get there after having sat at work for eight hours and then you run in late, you're you're talking to your buddies while you're kind of half-assed going through leg swings, and then, you know, it's time to, to deadlift, you know, 21, 15, 9 and, and something, you know, whatever else, box jumps. And the next morning you wonder, why does my back hurt so bad? Well, maybe That's it's right. because you just sat in a flex position, you know, for eight hours and then you went and pulled something heavy off the ground without, you know, prepping yourself. Um that's not what happens. You look at an NFL game, those guys warm up for like 45 minutes. You know, right. they warm up forever. It's because it's been shown that's the number one way to decrease the risk of an injury. And it's not, it's not just stretching, guys. It's, it's actually like prioritizing, stabilizing certain areas as well. Yeah, and going through some pre- maybe skill work, some rotational strength, some different strength elements that are going to transfer over to, to different movements and, and that are going to help all movements. So cool part is man i think this is a great episode tons of information on it i think the best part is that you know there's going to be a cool video series you know we're trying to come out of the podcasting a little bit we're finding we're getting a reach so we're, we're trying to put out some neat content this is such a priority to us so rather than just podcasting about it we got a cool video series coming out today so the date what is uh september 12th it's the opening of the the video series every day is back day where you know we have three cool videos um they'll be linked here in the show notes there's going to be something on the the home page where you can click it and check this stuff out guys this is something that danny sees in his practice something that i see a ton with athletes i work out you know you have this great plan danny and you want to qualify this guy for the american open and you, you you spend all this time to make the plan make the program dial in exercises attack his weaknesses and then all of a sudden he comes to you and says well i'm a fireman and i was putting on my oxygen tank to go fight a fire and i tweaked my back and it screws the whole thing up and and i know you see a ton of this so i yeah. think this video series will help i think the accompanying program afterwards you know it's it's you know, Danny and I talk about it. We've put a nine-week program together that kind of, you know, I hate to say something like spoon feeds it to you, but it's there. It's just these are exercises that I do, some things that Danny has taught me, um, some things that I've put on my athletes to warm up. And, and honestly, when folks do these things, their backs are healthy, their performance goes up, and they, they train with a smile on their face, not a worry in their mind. Absolutely. It's 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 a, it's a kind of a win-win, and especially if you can replace your warm-up for, for what, you know, we've well, for what we have programmed, you get a twofold effect. You, you're, you know, you're getting the benefit of uh, decreasing your risk of an injury, getting some some better spinal control, some back health. Hopefully, never having a back injury. If you have had one, never having one again. But also, you get a better warm up. You'll perform better. You literally will just do better at whatever it is that you're doing because you have some engagement in some very important areas um, versus just kind of going through the motions or maybe maybe doing something that wouldn't be quite as beneficial for you. So, um, yeah, the three-part video series is going to be really cool. You know, so uh, talking about, you know, why is it so important? How is this stuff structured? What, what do you need to look at for mobility? What kind of strength stuff do you need to work, look at? And if you guys are interested in, in – uh, getting access to this, go to our website. You can sign up for it. Um, if you're on our um, – 
if you're on our newsletter uh, mailing list, then we'll shoot an email out in reference to this stuff as well. But if you head over to DocAndJock.com, you can sign up for it on the front, uh, the, the, the home page. You can also sign up for it on the show notes page for this podcast. And, um, you know, take a look at this stuff because it's important. And, and I, we know for a fact many of you have reached out to us and we're trying to solve this problem for you. Um, and we don't have time. And maybe you just program the stuff that you like to do yourself, but it's not the stuff that you need. Well, and here's the cool thing about it. You know, uh, Johnny, Barbell Johnny, you know, they have an interesting population over at CrossFit Decanter, and right. he's put it on them. It's a bit of an older group. It's a pers- It's a group that's recreationally CrossFitting, and then they have benefited from it. And then the other thing is I do it. You know, I'm the second best weightlifter in the country is between the age of 35 and 40 who's 85 kg. That's pretty good. But also, you know, I got a guy who's about to qualify for the American Open. He just – front squad at 430 he snatches over 300 and he's about to clean and jerk 400 and you know what he's benefited from this stuff you know what i mean so um and he was the firefighter i'm talking about who's always got a junky back and you know nine weeks working this thing has really cleared his ass up so it's kind of that neat approach where it benefits everybody because it's just simple stuff that you're probably not doing and the cool part is there's a progression along with it so you can take it to even further than it's written out so man i'm really excited i hope this helps again danny it's been cool because this has to be between mobility and back stuff these are our most popular episodes this is the biggest question and honestly we have a battery of stuff that that shows that this stuff works and and hopefully we ha- we expand that pool with folks who kind of opt in and check this thing out and um the other thing folks can do danny is if they like it they can share the shit out of it you know what i mean spread the link around spread the videos around talk about it with your friends pass it along if it works for you it'll work for somebody else so um man you guys have supported the show so much with your questions it'd be really cool if you guys could pass this thing along as well Cool. Well, guys, take a look at that. Sign up for it if you aren't already uh, uh, part of the the uh, Doc and Jock uh, newsletter, and uh, make sure you get access. This stuff is going to be is going to be pretty helpful for for you and for your training. Um, and look forward to uh, big things coming from uh, Joe and I to to hopefully help you guys out and and really prove that uh, if you have a body, you're an athlete. What's going on, gang? Coach Joe here to talk to you a little bit about Performa Sleep. Guys, Performa Sleep has worked with industry experts to develop the ideal mattress for athletes and active people looking to improve their performance through better sleep. Guys, Performa Sleep is proud to say that every single Performa Sleep mattress is made in the USA and ships quickly from their warehouse to your door and hopefully gets in your bedroom pretty quick. Guys, I sleep on a Performa Sleep mattress. I absolutely love it. It's the only mattress on the market with copper cool technology. And I can say right now as a guy who sleeps hot, who sleeps with the sweats, I don't anymore in my Performa Sleep mattress. Check it out. Folks like myself, like Dr. Danny, Lauren Fisher, Emily Bridgers, Scott Pancheck are on the Performa Sleep mattress and have nothing but great things to say about it. So head over to PerformaSleep.com and click their big red buy now button and enjoy. <laughs> 